So we have the case, we are going to use the same example that we used in the introduction. So we have a new drug for diabetes. We want to verify how effective the drug is. So we select a run patients. In practice, we need more than that. Um, and we're going to measure the glucose levels pre and post at proper clinical time points you know, fasting blood sugar, whatever. I think that fasting blood sugar must be under 100 milligrams or close to 100 milligrams. So all these people have diabetes. Um, so we give them a drug and this is what we see. And in most cases, it seems to decrease. Yes, I decided that way. But is a decrease does it make a does it decrease imply the drug is significant? We don't know. So first step is to define the difference. How are we going to define it? Is it going to be pre minus post or post minus pre? Pick one. I pick one, pick it as post minus pre always. So I'm going to define ZI to be the post measurement minus the pre-measurement, you need to define that in order to identify the type of test that you intend to do. So what is the test necessary here? Should it be a right tail test, left tail test, two tail, two tail would work. Is it right or left? We'll decide on that. It has to be left because um, the post value must be less than the pre value. That is our requirement. So this is a left tail test. So no theta is zero. Alternative theta is less than zero, while theta is a location parameter. Doesn't have to necessarily be the median. Uh, but definitely not the mean. Um, but it will turn out that this ends up being sort of a median. Um, but it is a location parameter, and we want to see if it is zero or if it is less than zero. If it becomes less than zero, then the drug is actually efficacious. So that said, we have the observations pre. Post. Let me quickly rewrite it over here. Grab your calculator. We need it. Some of them are Step one, we've got to find the difference. We have defined the difference as post minus three. So 105 minus 131, uh, negative 26. 96 minus 136, negative 30. 162 minus 178, negative 16. 171 minus 191, negative 20. Negative 27, negative 61, negative 80, negative 526. They're all negative. Now, this is like doing a left tail test for a mean when you know the mean is actually um, when the sample mean is actually less than the claim mean significantly. So that's what we have. Just by looking at it, we sort of know that it's very likely that the drug is effective. But we can't just go with this. We need the sign. The signs over here, they're all negative. Yes. So psi i from last time, if psi i is 
one, then it would imply set i is positive, correct? They're all negative, so zero, 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 zero. Yes? Then we have to find the absolute value of set i. The absolute value of z i um, would be 26, 30, 16, 20, 27, 61, 80, 36. Yes? Rank. We want to rank these observations. And how do we run these? Smaller to large. Small to larger. So the smaller value of the absolute value here is one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. What is T plus? T plus is simply the sum of all the ranks that correspond to a positive sum. Yes. In other words, psi i being yes. Do your ranks matter because you're four and five? Yeah. Thanks. So. Um. So the positive runs would give us, if you add all the runs corresponding to positive signs, you get T plus. If you add all the um, signs corresponding to negative runs, you get T minus. So T minus is simply the sum of all the runs corresponding to negative signs. Well, if you add all of them together, it's simply the sum of n natural numbers, right? I'm just adding one through eight. Rank cannot be negative. Could you ever give someone a negative position? As an insult, yes. True. We're not assigning a negative rank. We are looking at the rank corresponding to a negative sign. So we are ranking the observations using the magnitudes, but we're going to pick those ranks that correspond to a negative sign. So here, T minus ends up being the sum of all these numbers. We know the sum of natural numbers is N times N plus one over two from last time. It's direct because all of them have a negative sign. So sum of negative signed ranks. Mind you, it's not a negative rank, negative sign rank. If you add them all together, um, what do we get? Thirty-six. Yes. Correct. So the sum of all negative runs end up being thirty-six, which would mean the sum of positive runs would be zero. Correct. Give me a second to put thing. You look at that and you say, well. That seems to be a really large number, correct? So because we've added all the negative runs, but it happens to be a huge number. And you may say we have to um, reject the null. 
but you should be careful here because since they all have negative numbers, um, the way to do it is either have it this way and multiply by a negative one or assign negative values to each of those numbers. So in this case, I end up getting 36. Um, what is the critical value corresponding to 36? How do we find that, excuse me, not corresponding to 36, corresponding to an alpha of 0.5? From last time, how did we find it? Q sine by. So should we use P sine by or Q sine by? Q. Q, why? What does Q stand for? Quantile. P stands for probability. So if I did Q sine log, can you see? N is A. The P value, not the P value, the probability is 0 0.05. That is our alpha, you know, left hand. So we are looking at this area over here, and we want to come up with a rejection region this time. Yes. Sorry, it's P stands for probability, Q stands for quantile. Quantile is simply percentile. So in this case, I'm finding the fifth percentile. If you're looking for a percentile, you would use Q. If you're looking for a probability, you would use P sign, right? So if you're looking for a critical value, critical value is a quantile. So we would use Q sign mark. If it is, um, less critical value, you would use quantum Q sign value. Later on, we will find the P value, in which case you would use P sign value. Good. Now, we want to find that number. When I type that in, 0 0.058, end up getting six. Yes? If you look at that, six is over here, 36 is over there. And you may say, oh, we have to reject that, the norm. But that doesn't make any sense. Do you agree? You can multiply it by negative one. So one of the approaches is you since you're looking at negative rounds, negative rounds will be uh, assigned negative one, positive rounds will be assigned positive one which would make things slightly different. Your textbook takes the approach of looking at only T plus and not, you know, in other words, using the zero one technique rather than the one minus one technique. So you look at that number, seems kind of fishy to me, right? Because everything is negative. There has to be some uh, significant uh, indicating that the drug is effective. So, based on how we define psi i and the ranks, the test is for t plus and not t minus. So, your textbook takes the approach of using t plus as the test statistic always. Good, don't forget. Well, we only found T minus, how do we find T plus? Look at your notes and tell me what it would be. We wrote this last time. We have T minus, so what is T plus? So from last time, we know T plus added to T minus must equal to the sum of all runs. Agreed? 
So we have T minus T plus would be equal to N times N plus one over two minus T minus. Good. And that would give us um, 36 minus 36. You get zero. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, is zero less than the critical value, left critical value, or six? Yes, the critical value is over there. Zero, or T plus, is over there. We reject if T plus is less than or equal to T alpha minus. Now, your book doesn't distinguish between a positive critical value and a negative critical value. I like to make that distinction so that you don't get confused. Negative up there, negative critical value. Positive up there, positive critical value. If I don't use a sign and put alpha over two, two tail critical value. Does that make sense? So we protect H law and the test statistic T plus is less than or equal to T alpha to minus. Good. The test up there? Yeah. I'll show you. I was going to wonder if it's okay. Yeah, there is. We can't do that. Without... Yeah, there is a way. Um, T plus less than or equal to T alpha minus, you will reject. In our case, we have T plus less than six, which is T alpha minus. This would mean reject null. If we reject null, this would imply the location parameter is less than zero, which would imply the location parameter is defined for post minus pre. Post minus pre is less than zero. This would imply post is less than three in a significant sense. Correct. So is the drug effective? Yes. Great. The other way to do this is to determine the p-value. What is the p-value um, for a left tail test? It is the area below the test statistic. We have the test statistic. Area below the test statistic is nothing but the probability or cumulative probability below test statistic. Yes. So when we had percentile or when we tried to find the critical value, critical value is a quantile. Here, it is a probability that we're looking for. So we have to use P sigma. And it is the area below and our test statistic is zero. And Eight. So p value happens to be 0 0.00396, approximately 0 0.004. Is that less than alpha? Should you reject the null? We reject the null if p value is less than or equal to alpha. So you should reject the norm. 
So we have the critical value to be six, the test statistic to be zero. You have to plug in the test statistic and not the critical value. So P sign rank, the test statistic is zero and A, you get 0 0.00396. Now, here is a question. What would you get if you put the test statistic, in, excuse me, the critical value instead of the test statistic in piece sign rank? What do you expect to get? Huh? Wonderful answer. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we will get a different number, but 0 0.05. Enlightened is kind of why 0 0.05. Because the probability of rejection region would be alpha. Because the probability of rejection region is alpha. So we use 0 0.05 to find that number six, correct? So if I went in reverse, and I put in 0 0.05 comma a, I'm sorry, six comma a, comma a, 0 0.05 for six. Does that make sense? You can't expect to get exactly 0 0.05 because these are all um, computation. Does that make sense? So in the Q sign rank, you use the critical value. Yes, Q sign rank gives you the critical value, P sign rank. P value in both cases, we are looking at the area below and not above. So these calculations need to be done manually on an exam. Um, but we can use R to find the values also. Um, before we get to that, just to recap on this. Um, pre-values, post-values, that is our data. All it is that we did here is the procedure and your book always uses T plus, but there are two ways to do it. Uh, I don't know what R does, we can search a bit. We reject the null in a left tail test if that T plus is less than or equal to the critical value um, left critical value, which in our case is six. That was the case, we rejected, p-value is less than alpha also, we reject the null, the drug is effective because the way we defined z is both minus pre. In other words, what does the location measure? The location is measuring post minus pre. So the post sugar values, blood sugar values are less than the free blood sugar values, so the drug is effective. Okay? And it is statistically significant. Now, could we do this in R? We can. So there is a test called well, what? Wilcox test. Now, if you look at the description, it says performs one sample and two sample tests. And let's see. So you have the X values, Y values, that's the data. The important thing when you do this in R is pad equals true. If you don't specify pad equals true, then it is going to do a Wilcoxon two sample test, which is a uh, two sample uh, location problem. We're looking at a single sample pad differences. So we have to select or set pad equals true. Or they also say 
Instead of doing that, you can do y minus x post minus three and choose an alternative that is the same thing. Does that make sense? So I'm going to type in all three values. Three value would be x, so 131, 126, 178, 191, 138, 161, one hundred, one hundred two, and ninety five. What the hell? Yeah, good. So three post Wilcox dot test three comma post, and you specify pad equals true. If you don't. It's going to do the Wilcoxon um, test for two samples, um, which is a rank sum test. Once you specify that, you've got to specify the alternative. If you type alternative as greater, it is going to do a right tail test, less left tail test. For a two tail test, you would type it as two dots cited. So I'm going to do less. Good. And you can see it is giving us P equals 36 and P value equals one. That is doing the reverse of T plus that we did earlier, correct? Does that make sense? So what should we do in our case? In our case, we've got to switch Y and X to suit R. Does that make sense? The way R is programmed is different from the manual case. Here, you, what it's giving us is T minus, but we're not going to look at T minus, the test is based on T plus. So if you flip, that would be the answer. Does that make sense? So V is zero, P value is 0 0.003906. The way R does is different from what we do here. We always do post minus spring. Keep the same order of the post minus spring. Easier way to remember. Um, otherwise, it is going to do what we did initially. Now, key thing to note here is um, when you get a value like this, you've got to stop and ask yourself, especially in a problem like this. I define it this way so that you don't get confused because this is the first problem. Just by looking at it, they all have negative signs. And if you are going to use negative signs, um, and add up all the rungs, you're going to get 36. But that wouldn't make any sense because, or shouldn't make any sense, because if every single trial, every single patient indicated a decrease in blood sugar, how could you, you say, no, 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 um, the drug is not effective at all? You know, practical common sense can't be true. So, this is where you've got to stop and think, okay, R is programmed in a different way than, you know, what we're doing. So R does the exact same thing that the book does, which is reverse. Does that make sense? We always test for T plus. Another thing that you've got to keep in mind is the second method. One, you define the statistic in a different manner. 
put ones for positive rungs, negative ones for negative rungs. That testing procedure would result in the same conclusion that the process is different. So we'll just stick to this. Does that make sense? Okay. If the scenario changed and we want to do a right tail test, um, what should we look for in terms of the test statistic? We have to add what runs? Which runs? Um, positive runs. All the runs corresponding to positive values, um, which would give us T plus. And where would the rejection region be? It should be on the other side. And I made this problem easy, but all of them negative. And there are no ties, right? Do you see any ties? No. Um, next time, I'm going to create a problem where you've got some plus signs, some minus signs, and we want to test if it's significant or not. This problem is trivial because it's obvious. We don't need a statistician to tell us the drug is effective. Yes? If you were to do it, uh, a T plus test, it wouldn't be plus minus three. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which will turn everything to be positive. And whatever value you get here, will be bigger than the critical value on the right hand side. So if you tied if you flipped everything and you looked at 36 um, P sign rank on the right hand side alpha is 0.05 which is the area above. So the area below would be one minus 0.05. So you'd plug in 0.95 and N is A, sorry, Q side rank. But you got the P point. You get 30, yes? So on the right hand side, the positive critical value is 30, test statistic is 36. Would you reject the null? Yes, you would still reject the null. Which is why I said defining at the beginning the Z is crucial. If you mess this up, you're going to get confused in different ways. And also, this procedure and R, you've got to understand how things differ. Your book has an example in R as well. Um, so you can look in the textbook. So when you do the homework, you can compare both and see if you're doing it right. But on an exam, the only way to do it is this. I will not ask you to find p-values, exact p-values on an exam, because you cannot um, manually. But next time we'll do an approximation, a large scale approximation, we can find a p-value for that, yes. We can't do Q sign work in the calculation. So how are we going to get that? I will give you the tape. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are fun to read on this test. I'll give you a tape. Right, you guys to read that. I'll create one and I'll show you next time. Because I've got to put the table for the homework also. Okay. So it should be fine. I'm just trying to make sure um, we're going to do something and it's not like stopping at some point.